Alabama Cincinnati game. This is the number one seeded Alabama 12 and one Crimson Tide versus the number four seed 13 and 0 uh, Cincinnati Bearcats uh, and Arlington, Texas, and Jerry World kicking off at 3 30 Eastern time. Uh, starting with you, Chris, just want to kind of get your initial feelings about this game um, and, and, and kind of go from there. Sure. You know, this is uh, obviously the group of five. They finally have their shot. I think that this is the most deserving of those really good group of five teams that we've seen over the last decade or so. Better than the undefeated UCF, all those good Boise State teams, TCU. This is the best one out of that bunch. And here they are. They finally are going to get their shot. Unfortunately for them, you know, I think things would look a little different as far as like how I would look at their chances in this game. If it wasn't against Alabama, I'm sure they were just groaning when, uh, you know, the Auburn running back stayed in bounds and uh, Crimson Tide found a way to rebound and, and come back in that game against Auburn, which they looked terrible for three quarters of it, you know, right in, up until the end. Um, but laser focus, they blew out Georgia um, in the SEC title game and I think that's going to carry on into this game against Cincinnati and uh, it, it's not going to be close, but uh, you know, hats off to the Bearcats. I, I just, I don't think that they're just happy to get there. I think they're going to have a good showing, but in the end, oh, Alabama, if they play like they did against Georgia, man, they could overwhelm them quick. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And, and going over to you, Ty, obviously this Alabama team has been inconsistent throughout the extent of the season. Uh, a lot of close calls, specifically in the tail end of the season in November against teams like LSU and, and Arkansas. And, and not a lot of people, including me, and a, an alumni of the school, was expecting the, the big win over Georgia that they had in the SEC championship. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what do you think the keys to success are for Alabama in this game? And, and what do you think they're going to try to focus on specifically to stop Desmond Ritter and the uh, Cincinnati offense? Um. This game is is hard for me to because, you know, I do my team talent formula. You can find it on sportscast.net. It's just kind of hard per, on a very personal level and how fundamentally I believe talent matters and how you when you got the Jimmy and the Joes on one side, how it's just extremely difficult, no matter how great the coach is, no, how, like, no matter how experienced the roster is, no matter how good a team that, that Cincinnati has. I just have a hard time seeing the worst roster from a baseline perspective that has ever made the CFP, a team that is, they only played, they only played three other teams in the whole season with top 50 talent, according to the, according to the 247 team talent composite. I'm just having a hard time seeing Cincinnati really to be able to match up with Alabama. And I know Alabama wasn't consistent, and a lot of that had to do with youth. I think it was kind of one of the younger Alabama rosters. Um, they had a lot of youth starting on the offensive line, so they had some offensive line issues early in the season. Um, I also think um, the wide receiver position was pretty young. Um, you had guys like Menchie and Jamison Williams are more experienced, but you're, you're pretty young other than that, pretty young at the tailback position. But as you saw – that talent really came together against um, Alabama. I'm sorry, against Georgia, and they were able to really dominate that game. I, I don't think that was the best game by Georgia. I think, I think you'd see a much more competitive game in the national title. Um, uh, spoiler alert: that is my national title. Uh, but I, I, I just, I, I just don't, I don't, I cannot possibly see how Cincinnati can match up on the offense, defensive line. I cannot see how they're going to match up with the athletes on the outside. <laughs> So for Alabama, you just go out and play your game. Uh, you mix it up. You, uh, I mean, maybe not exactly, definitely the same game plan as Georgia. There's definitely a very creative um, play calling by Bill O'Brien. And Bryce Young just played out of his mind in that game. He doesn't even have to play out of his mind against Cincinnati. Uh, Bill O'Brien doesn't even have to have an overtly creative game plan. He, he, they just need to line up, and, and I don't think Cincinnati can match up. I, I, I if this game is within three touchdowns, I will be very, very surprised. I just, I just can't possibly see this roster that Cincinnati has and this, and then who they play against matching up against Alabama. I mean, I think Alabama has played five or six other teams that would beat Cincinnati on a pretty consistent basis. I think this really is the. I, I hate to be nihilistic about Cincinnati, but I think this is the worst team to ever make the college football playoff. I, I just do so. Um, my the answer to that question is Alabama just needs to go out and just play their game. And I think they win by three to four touchdowns. 
Yeah, all, all really great points. And, and just to play a little bit of devil's advocate here from the Cincinnati side of things, they are tied uh, for the best record in terms of win losses with Alabama in all of college football over the last two years. Uh, they played really, really well against Georgia in their bowl game last year. Obviously, bowl games, much different scenario than a playoff game where you have so much more to play for. Byron, passing it over to you, I'm curious to see what you think. What is it that Cincinnati does that makes them successful, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball? And what are your thoughts on Desmond Ritter as a quarterback? Uh, you know, is he legit? Do you think he has an NFL future? Would love to hear your thoughts on that. Me, you know, being a guy that played like in a smaller school, you know, Tulsa, you know, where I went, and when we did play, you know, the bigger schools, the OUs, we played the Oklahoma State, you know, you do get up for the, you know, the big schools. For them, that's what it's going to be the same thing for. They are going to get up because it's the big bad OU, not OU, but uh, Alabama, you know, and they're going to show the world, you know, that they belong, um, you know, on the field. You know, as far as, uh, you know, Ritter, I think he's going to be the X factor, you know, as far as the quarterbacks that uh, Alabama has had problems with that could run a bit. That could, that might be an issue. They have had in the past, you know, issues with court, you know, you know, Manziel back in the day, you know, uh, Deshaun Watson and, you know, the guys they played, they could run a little bit. I, they don't have to be, you know, world-class sprinter, but just enough to keep them honest when you have those guys, you know, screaming off the edge. I think personally that uh, they're going to match up. They're going to match up. They're going to do their thing. I, I don't be surprised. I'm going to go Cincinnati Bearcats. Love that. Um, Chris, I, I want to hear your thoughts on, the Heisman Trophy winner, Bryce Young, what is it that, that he does that, that, that makes him so successful? Um, you know, obviously he's a very talented kid and, and he's mastered Alabama's offense really quickly here. Keep in mind, you know, he's a first year starter, which, which I really think uh, drives home the point of, of just how great of a season he's had. But in your opinion, you know, what sets him apart from the rest? And, uh, you know, what are you most excited about seeing from his game on, uh, on Friday afternoon? Like you mentioned, you know, this is a first year starter and he becomes the first Alabama quarterback to win the Heisman. That's that's just phenomenal in its own right. Uh, no, no mistakes. You know, only four interceptions this year. Um, and he, he gets the ball to where it needs to go. I, I think that losing Mechie is, is uh, that's obviously a huge, huge blow to any team other than Alabama. In steps uh, Ohio State transfer and Jameson Williams, it, it's just also a phenomenal wide receiver for him to throw to. So I think that against Georgia, he was just at, its, at his best and uh, proved he was the worthy recipient of the trophy this year. And I think he, like Ty said, he doesn't have to play out of his mind to, to, for Alabama to roll in this game. I think he's going to do just that, just manage the game, not make any mistakes like he's done all year, and he's going to have that offense humming. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And, and Ty, I, I wanted to hear your thoughts specifically on two players on Cincinnati's secondary, one being Sauce Gardner, uh, who I, I've seen in a lot of projections as a first round NFL draft pick at corner, as well as Kobe Bryant, uh, spelled differently than obviously the NBA player. Uh, I know he's going to be wearing the number eight uh, jersey for this game as well. But just talk a little bit about those players and, and you know, where you project them to go in, in the NFL draft and, and really how talented they are and how they can scheme up against, you know, Jamison Williams and, and some of the, uh, the deep wide receiver room that Alabama has. So I'm going to be honest, Cincinnati's roster is probably the one that I know the least of any of these teams, just because I usually follow the, the power five schools, the team in the top 25. Now, those two guys are very good players. Um, and, and, and in general, Luke Fickle, his ability to develop, uh, I, I know I kind of did a diss session on the whole talent on Cincinnati's roster, but um, Luke Fickle is, is one of the best coaches in college football. He's, he's, and his ability to develop players on either side of the ball, but especially on the defensive side of the ball, is, has, been, has been great since he's been there. He obviously had Marcus Freeman, who I believe was the best defensive coordinator. He's now the head coach of Notre Dame. So he was just tremendous in like recruiting guys and developing them up. And, and I think Gardner and Brian will both be early round draft picks. There would be guys that obviously did not come out of high school as extremely highly rated guys, but through great development and a great program that Luke Fickle has developed at Cincinnati, they will be early round draft picks and they will have the ability to 
I think, match up with some of the Alabama wide receivers. I think where I see more of the issue is, that's why I said Young doesn't have to play out of his mind because obviously Menchie just got hurt. Um, I, I don't think the wide receiver group is, is definitely as good this year for Alabama. You don't have um, the Judys. Uh, um, uh, I'm forgetting the guy. The guy that, that ended up getting kicked out of the NFL for killing someone. What was his name? Rugs. 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 Um, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell. I mean, these are some of the best receivers that come out the last decade. These are all first round guys. Um, I, I mean, I, I think Williams is obviously good. Bolden's a soft, solid slot receiver. Um, I think Early has, he's definitely going to be a good player, but he's a freshman. Billingsley's a solid tight end. But I, I, I think that the, the, like the guys like Gardner and Bryant, I think that they're match up fairly decent. So that's why I think Alabama just needs to be themselves and do what really Nick Saban at heart wants to do and just smash it down the throat and just use Robinson and just use that big offensive line to kind of impose its will. Because I do think they're, the secondary of Cincinnati is pretty good. And I don't think they're as strong at the wide receiver position as they have been in recent years. So therefore Alabama can go back to the Nick Saban way. Because at heart, if you know Nick Saban, you remember his early years, his first three, four national titles. He 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 would just sit there all day and run right down your throat. And and so I don't I don't think you'd mind that. But you still got Bryce Young. He's one of the he's the best quarterback in college football. So you're gonna definitely do both. You're gonna mix it up. But um, I do think those two guys and that and the Cincinnati secondary is pretty good. So I if they can make some plays, that would be the that would be the game changer. If they can create some turnovers. Guys like that making a couple picks in the back end, uh, returning one for a touchdown, that, that's what would make it a game is Alabama making mistakes. That's why I, I foresee Alabama kind of just leaning on its run game and utilizing the pass game when necessary. Yeah, Ty, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think a game, a game plan that Alabama could look at that they could utilize in this game, particularly around the season, was against Ole Miss. Uh, where they they just fed the ball to Brian Robinson. I think he had four touchdowns in that game. Uh, you know, Bryce had a, had a pretty good day, maybe 200 yards and two touchdowns, but it was really leaning on that offensive line, leaning on Brian Robinson, and, and something that I think is going to be a big key for this game that uh, would have been a problem for Alabama if they were playing Cincinnati, you know, a week after the Georgia game is Brian Robinson's health. Uh, I know he was dealing with a hamstring injury, uh, an ankle injury coming after the, out of the Auburn game and was used lightly. Uh, against Georgia, although he did have a pretty pretty good game in that one. Byron, I'm curious to learn a little bit about Cincinnati's mentality in the locker room. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of people doubting this team in terms of, you know, matching up against Alabama. Uh, and, and really, you know, what do you think their mentality is as a player coming from a, a G5 school? Um, you know, do they think that they can give themselves a chance by – just going out and playing their game or is there something schematically that they're going to have to do in order to, to take advantage of uh, this opportunity? Probably, you know, a combination of both, you know, where, you know, the coaches are going to put them, you know, in a good position, you know, to succeed, you know, do well, but, you know, now it just, it's on them, you know, now they're going to be the ones that are lined up, you know, see those white uniforms of red or whatever they're wearing that day. And the big, bad Alabama, they're going to see that, you know, that, these guys are just like them, put their pants on the same way, do the same thing that they, you know, go to practice, you know, have been out there sweating, you know, since August and, you know, summer and everything. So um, they're going to line up and they're going to smack him in the mouth and we'll see. They're going to shock the world. That's all I got to keep saying. I love it. I love Byron's faith in, in, in Cincinnati. Uh, before moving on, last thing I wanted to talk about in this game uh, and going over to you, Chris, obviously Josh Job, uh, Alabama's starting corner, is going to be out for the remainder of the season and out of this game. Um, what do you think Cincinnati's game plan is going to be? Is it what they've done all season? You know, lean on Jerome Ford and Alabama transfer, by the way. Uh, and, and, you know, kind of like Byron said, smack them in the mouth from, from the offensive defensive line, or are they going to try to air it out? Are they going to try to spread Alabama out, go quick, utilize Desmond Ritter's legs? You know, what, what would you do, you know, if you're Luke Fickle and, and the Cincinnati offense? Well, I think that Ritter is going to have to do some things with his legs if they want to stay in this game, but you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Ford, you know, he's, he was a guy that was on Alabama's roster. So he knows these guys better than anyone else on Cincinnati. So I think in the games in the playoff where Alabama has uh, played a, a massive underdog and, and kind of just overwhelmed them early on, Michigan State, uh, Washington, those teams couldn't run the ball against Alabama and just kind of made it stifling. Uh, 
Ford has to get some yards in this game uh, if the Cincinnati is going to be successful and stay in it. I think the first quarter is a massive, uh, massively important for this offense too. They, they, they can't go down big early on. And uh, like I said, I think Ridner and Ford getting it done on the ground is going to um, be their key to success and, and not falling behind early. Yeah, I think that's a great point too. But but going into that, you know, Alabama has a really stout run defense. They they have a really great front seven with really athletic guys. So I'm interested to see if if that's you know what they they try to do in the first couple series, and then you know you go from there. But. Uh...